Hey everyone. This video was supposed to be about the universe gauntlet, but right before I started working on it, the portal gauntlet dropped, and to take advantage of it, I decided to do this video instead. I want to remind you all that these are my opinions, so please don't get mad at me. Although you can still go to the comments and say it there. With nothing left to say, let's jump to the first level. Before starting to talk about Azimuth, I just want to clarify that I did not expect anything from this gauntlet. In fact, I expected it to be pretty mid, but after I beat only the first level, I was convinced otherwise. This level is just amazing. The gameplay is fun for a reason I will explain later. The song is awesome, especially this one part where the gameplay just stops and the camera starts going up. And the lyrics of the song starts appearing. God, it's so cool. And don't even get me started on the decoration. Knotts is still one of the most underrated creators in GD, with almost every level I've seen from him being a masterpiece. Azimuth shines with the cartoony and yet mind-blowing style that it has, and I think that it's an amazing way to start this gauntlet. 9 out of 10. Also, the compass jump scare exists. <laughs> Playing Shards of Siberia felt weird. It's a level that only uses shades of black and white, and I feel like the level does a great job with it. It never felt like there's a part where I want the color palette to change. The song is great. Mylophone should get some more recognition, since they have great songs here and there. But before jumping into the thing that defines my score, I just want to mention how this is Zender Game's first gauntlet level, and the fact that he made it in five days, and he called it a very experimental level, shows how good of a creator he is. But now it's time to talk about the weirdest aspect of the level, the gameplay. Shards of Siberia's gameplay is really strange for me. In fact, I had to use practice mode for it, which I didn't do for any other level except one that's coming later. The part at 20% is the one that felt like the worst since it doesn't really hint where you need to jump, but honestly it's not that big of a deal, and it's a really solid level that should get more attention. I hope that more of Zender's levels get added soon. After finishing Shards of Siberia, I expected the gauntlet to have the same level of quality, but after finishing Between Worlds, I was surprised, because I did not expect to play a level as good as this one. Most levels are really fast and have tons of things that force you to focus, but this isn't the case with Between Worlds. This is a 3 minute long level, and yes, Azimuth was 3 minutes long as well, but that level felt like an actual Geometry Dash level. This feels like something different. Between Worlds is a full-on experience that I beat in two attempts. I should also point out that the gameplay is fun and easy to sight-read thanks to the same thing that made Azimuth's gameplay fun. Don't worry, I'll explain it right after this, but I'll make a short summary of the level before that. The level starts in a forest, then you reach a pedestal, which happens like three or four times in the level. Each time you reach one, the level takes a turn, with the entire decoration changing. Also, I want to mention that the music is special, because it was made specifically for this level. Basically, the sound effects trigger before it even existed. And I just wanted to point that out, since it's just too cool. Seeing pre-2.2 levels using music that was made specifically for it. This level's amazing, a really special experience that gets a 10 out of 10. Hey, I think that you should remember what I mentioned in Azimuth and Between Worlds' parts. The one thing about gameplay being fun. You see, both levels have every single jump marked, and honestly, seeing that Azimuth is a 4 star and Between Worlds is a 5 star, I think that's perfectly fine. Now, here's the problem. Strides of Siberia doesn't mark every jump. At least, not every single one, despite also being a 4 star. That's why the 20% part is the strongest one for me. It just doesn't give you hints. You just... die there. So that's why I think Shards of Siberia should be a 5 star and should probably go 2nd instead of 3rd, since I consider this being a tiny bit harder than Between Worlds. With nothing left to say, let's jump straight into the most interesting review of the video. I first downloaded Geometry Dash in 2015, I joined the community around 2017, and I got the game on PC around 2020. In all of these 9 years, I've never played any level like Wymy, I'm just gonna call it Wymy. This review is gonna be a bit more serious than normal, so please just hear me out. This is an experience I've never had before. Ever. 
Why Me is basically a GD vent level that's 4 minutes long. Initially, I thought it was going to be hell since, come on, 4 minutes? But frankly, it didn't matter at all. Because of several reasons, I couldn't stop thinking about the level after I beat it for the first time. So then I went to beat it again, and the same happened. It felt so relatable. Like doing things for other people to enjoy when really, sometimes it's a pain to do it right. Many people have called out the creator for being whiny and exaggerated, but admit it, we've all felt like this once. Felt like no one is actually listening, just criticizing, and that hurts. The level itself is amazing, featuring gameplay based on these rectangle-like parts of the level that, I think, the creator never got to finish. This level, like Between Worlds, feels like an experience rather than a Geometry Dash level. Except, it's one where you actually get to know the creator. Know what he thinks, know his struggle to build things that satisfy people enough. The gameplay is... You know what? The gameplay isn't a problem. It's forgiving enough to make you be able to focus on what the level is trying to tell you, while also being hard. I think that's what pisses most people off. But there's another thing I want to talk about. This level... shouldn't be here. Why me shouldn't be in a gauntlet? One of the reasons is that, in my opinion, it's a really fragile level, and just seeing it as a cool level with cool effects is underrating it too much. This is more than a Geometry Dash level. It's the creator telling you his struggle, but by far what hurts this level the most is that people don't see it that way. People just see it as this one annoying gauntlet level that takes a shit ton of time to beat. It's more than just that. There are too many reasons in why this level works so well, because it feels like something that can happen to anyone, and I love that. So I think that a perfect score isn't enough. This, for now, will be the only level I give a score of, hear me out, 11 out of 10. It means so much if you see it as I do, and even if I think that it doesn't belong here, it's such a real level that has a spot on my heart forever. For now, this level will stay as my second favorite Geometry Dash level of all time, only behind Atomic Cannon. I know this is going to make people want to kill me, but you can just say it on the comments. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go beat it again. To end this gauntlet off, we have Sura- 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 Tet. Yeah, that one. It's a really cool level. The decoration is amazing. I'd seen some levels from Xenoteric, like that one 5 FPS level, and I gotta say, they're an insanely underrated creator. The gameplay is honestly forgiving, at least for a 6 star, and I feel like it's a good way to close off the portal gauntlet. The song is great. It's a Creo song, and that makes it an instant banger. Since we had so many insane experience with this one with the last two levels, I think that Suratet is a good way to get a fairly chill level. So chill in fact, that I beat it in my first attempt and I fluked the entire thing from 1 or 2%. Sadly this does make this level the worst of the gauntlet, but the fact that it's still a really good level goes to show how good this one really is. I don't think I was not satisfied with anything in the portal gauntlet, and finish it off with a really charming and laid back level is a really good thing to add. Solid 8 out of 10. So, how was the gauntlet? Well, the cover design is strange, to say the least, but I think it fits the portal theme, since it looks from another world. The swing given is good, a little too detailed for me, but frankly, it fits the portal theme enough for me to give it a pass, since it looks like an escape pod ripped straight out of a sci-fi movie. Wait a damn minute, do you not know who GLaDOS from Portal is? <laughs> anyway. I really don't think there's anything wrong with this gauntlet, and I can only say good things about it, especially between worlds and why me. My final gauntlet score? A perfect 10 out of 10. Yes, this is, in my opinion, the best gauntlet in the game. The next video will 100% be the universe gauntlet one, since I had to release this one before I forgot to. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.